Welcome to another episode of With Your Morning Coffee. <laughs> Got some coffee in here. Um, I haven't done this series since the summer because I was slacking. And I was listening to Satan's lies that I was not qualified to be doing this anymore. Gotta lock the car. And I was just being stupid and foolish and just not listening to God. So here we are. In this episode, I just want God to kind of lead us through the Bible and reveal what he wants to reveal to us. So probably just hop around the Bible. Um, go get your matcha. I don't know. And probably get your Bible out. I also will have it right here if you don't have a Bible and you still want to follow along. I'm reading from the ESV version and I got my Bible from Altered State. So I opened my Bible and I was flipping around and Psalm 59 stood out to me. So we're going to start by reading that and then kind of go other places. Deliver me from my enemies. Oh my God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. I think it's interesting here how it's kind of promised or expected that people will rise up against us too as Christians. Sorry, I won't like stop every two minutes. I will though. Verse 2. Deliver me from those who work evil and save me from the bloodthirsty men. For behold, they lie in wait for my life. Fierce men stir up strife against me. For no transgression of sin of mine, O Lord. Verse 4. For no fault of mine, they run and make ready. Awake, come to meet me and see. You, Lord, <laughs> it's so interesting. David's like, come, Lord, see. You, O Lord, God of hosts, are God of Israel. Rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Spare none of those who treacherously plot evil. Each evening, they come back howling like dogs and prowling around about the city. There they are, bellowing with their mouths, with swords in their lips for who they think will hear us. Uh, there's a lot of things here. David's anger, we can see in verse 5, rouse yourself to punish all the nations. I think that David's approach, like he's really going through it right now. It's actually insane how the Bible lines up. I was doing some research on like what books kind of collide and like what goes together. If we go to 1 Samuel 19, it's titled Saul tries to kill David. So as Saul is trying to kill David, David is writing Psalm 59 and that's how it lines up and as you can see David's anger rise and rise again you can kind of see how it directly correlates with what's going on in his life understanding why David's angry I think is very important he's not just like going through something lightly like God chose him God never said it would be easy he's struggling right now and he's calling out to God it's so cool how we get this full picture of what's happening to David. It's not like, oh, I wonder what's happening with David. I wonder why he feels so angry. And I, I wonder why he feels like there's bloodthirsty men around him. Because people were trying to kill him. So, there we go. I think that's interesting. David's like righteous anger. And I think we can have that today. It's kind of like that mentality. Like, I know who my God is. I'm going to follow my God. I'm going to listen to what he says. In the end, his judgment will reign. His wrath will come upon the nation as it is due because we serve a just and righteous God. And with that, he's going to have his judgment, rightfully so. Also, verse seven, there they are bellowing with their mouths with swords in their lips. I, that just goes to show how much power we hold in the way we talk and communicate and talk to one another. Swords in their lips, verse eight. But you, O Lord, laugh at them. You hold all the nations in derish, derision. What does derision mean? Contemptuous, ridicule, or mockery. Okay. That same idea of like God laughs at the wicked, that's repeated so many times in Psalms and Proverbs. It's so crazy and I just love when I read that. I don't know why. Verse 9. Oh, my strength, I will watch for you, for you, O oh God, are my fortress. My God, in his steadfast love, will meet me. God will let me look in triumphant why can't I read? God, let me look in triumph on my enemies. Also, going back to verse 6, each evening they come back howling like dogs. I think the enemy is so persistent. Think about it. Each evening they come back. They will not rest until your soul is destroyed. That is Satan's plan. To come at you with everything that he's got. Day after day after day after day. Ready to devour. So... I really like how confident David is in verse 11. My God in his steadfast love will meet me. 
I have full confidence in that. Isn't that amazing? 11. Kill them not lest my people forget. Make them totter by the power and bring them down. David's basically saying, don't kill them right away. Don't take them out of their misery. I want you to make them totter over your glory and over your wrath and just make them tremble in front of you and realize their wrongdoings. Oh, David's hurt. Oh Lord, our shield for the sin of their mouths, the words of their lips, let them be trapped in their pride for the cursing and lies that they utter. Consume them in wrath and in wrath. Consume them till they are no more that they may know that God rules, that God rules over Jacob to the ends of the earth. Each evening they come back, howling like dogs and prowling around about the city. They wander about it for food and growl if they do, if they do not get full. Why am I like stuttering so much right now? Again, we have that same repetition in line 14 that we do in verses 6. Just emphasizing how persistent Satan truly is. But this time, in verse 15, it emphasizes if the howling dogs don't get what they want and they're they're not full with what they have, they will growl. And that will continue to make them more and more angry. I think that we should strive to make the howling dogs in our life growl. They should come to the cities, not find what they're looking for because of our strong faith in God, and then go home growling, complaining, hungry, disappointed, because they did not get what they wanted, which was our soul. Okay, let's make the enemy growl. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. No, seriously. I just, sometimes I don't know how to handle, like, serious um, moments, and then I just, like, laugh. So, sorry, God. This is serious. Amen. In verse 16, But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning, for you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Think about this for a second. David is going through it right now. He wants destruction over his enemies. He has this anger in his heart, this righteous anger in his heart because he knows what's good and what's from God. And he knows that these people are not doing what's of God and not um, obtaining God's law. In verse 16, he's, he's finding joy. Even as his enemies are prowling, even as his enemies are howling and trying to rip apart his soul, these bloodthirsty men trying to rip apart his soul, he is choosing to sing because of God's strength, not his own strength, God's strength. Notice this, verse 16 and then the one below it, I will sing aloud, not only will I sing of your strength, but I will sing aloud. He wants people to hear this. I'm going through a storm right now, but you know what? I'm choosing to sing out loud. That's the message I'm sending to the growling dogs. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love starting in the morning. Why? Because you have been a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Faithfulness. God's faithfulness. 17. Last verse. Oh, my strength. This is like the fifth time. How many times... Oh my strength, this is a popular way that David starts these lines. Oh my strength, I will sing praises to you for you, O oh God, are my fortress, the God who shows me steadfast love. So clearly in Psalms 59, we can see that theme of God being our fortress, our shelter, our protection, and also the common theme of his steadfast love. And because of his steadfast love, he will not forsake us. He will not leave us. Um, also the repeated theme of God being um, our strength and Satan's uh, persistence. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, dead to sin, alive to God. I'm actually doing a Bible study on Romans right now, and it's so good. What shall we say then? Are we to continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. I think it's really interesting. Like, we have been baptized and we are just not the same. Romans as a whole, I think, speaks of so many questions that people usually ask um, about Christianity. Like, one question people ask all the time is like, well, if God's just going to forgive you, you might as well just sin. It's right here, Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue sinning that grace may abound by no means? Paul's already thought of this. He's like, 
<laughs> I know what these people are gonna say to me. Okay, verse 5. Or if we have been united with him in his death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Amen. You have to declare it. Your sin has no power over you in the name of Jesus because we, our old self, our old sinful self, has been crucified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die die. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. I just want to encourage you right now if you're struggling with any type of sin. Our body is not controlled by our heart which is deceitful above all else and it is in our power to say no I'm not going to make it obey its passions because naturally our body is just crave sin and it's just like do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but, pre but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but by grace. But under grace. I feel like Romans does not need any translation right now. We are just reading the word of God. 15 slaves to righteousness. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law by under grace? By no means. Do you know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are a slave of one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? It's one or the other. One of them leads to death, one of them leads to eternal life. But thanks be to God that you who were once enslaved to sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. Amen. Who wants to be a slave to righteousness right now? Declare it in the name of Jesus. All I want to do is be a slave to righteousness. Servant of God, speak, O Lord, your servant is listening. Slave to righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time? from the things of which you are now ashamed. Verse 20, that might be my favorite verse in this whole thing. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. You didn't have this commitment of being righteous, this this kind of self-denying righteousness that comes from God. Yeah, you were free to righteousness, but what fruit were you getting when you were being a slave to sin? And he even says, what fruit were you getting and now you're ashamed of all that fruit that you were once getting while you were slaves to sin. For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Woo! That's awesome. I forgot to pray at the beginning, so that was my bad. So I'm just going to pray for you now. Uh, dear guys, thank you so much for this person on the other end of the screen. I thank you for this opportunity that we can communicate. Um, and I just pray for their heart that you would just guard it. You would be with them. Um, I pray that this video blesses people. I pray that I would maybe be able to be a part of a community for someone that really needs community right now. I pray that um, the words that I just spoke, that they were not from me. I really believe that in Jesus' name. They were from you, and you wanted these people to hear it. I just thank you that they were faithful. They had a feeling about this video. They clicked on it, and they're still here right now, and they just want to receive you, God. I just thank you that, that they are just being faithful right now, and they just want 
to be used. I pray for their uh, futures and for just that you would guard them and you would just continue to let them be led by you. Let them be led by the Spirit. God, just reveal yourself to them. They are hungry for you. Help them have a, a thirst and help them to faint for you. Just, just a greater desire to know you. Um, God, I just thank you so much. I pray that you would help me when editing and posting. Give me wisdom. Uh, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm a little drained right now. I feel like I just gave you a chunk of my heart. Now I have to go to chemistry extra help, so comment what chapters, books, verses you want me to read on the next video. You're a real one if you really stayed. Socials are always in the description, and I love you so much. Have the best day ever. Bye.